Let's see. Zoo Adventures. I got to pick. Where haven't we gone? Oh, uh, Digital Friends. Zoo Adventures today. Uh, we're going to uh, tay. Let's go to. Let's go to the desert. Yeah. Like the desert. Um, your team today, Steve, will be in front of the camera. And Megan behind the camera. Bringing you some really cool animals. So let's go to the desert. Let's figure out how to get yeah. to the desert. Um, so come left, past. Right, straight. Or and do we just turn around? Find the desert. It looks like it's a dome. Yeah. Big so dome. down from the red wolves, Can't up, miss it. up from honeybee. Can't miss ready? It. What do you think, Megan? You ready to go? Turn around. Go turn around? Me? Turn around, Steve. Oh. Oh. There's the Magnum Desert Dome. Uh let's let us let us let's, let's go. Yay! All right, let's go in and see if we can find Megan. I bet she, oh, she is here. She's always here. She's always in front. Waiting on you. Always waiting on me. Um, so here, yeah, we're gonna start our tour of the desert habitat at the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina. Our first animals, the beaded lizard and the Gila monster. I don't see anybody. Typically on the ground. They're kind of bumpy looking. The Gila monster is more of a peachy black. Wait, wait, I think I see somebody. I gotta, get the, I gotta get the glare no right. You're, up, you're too high. They're what? on the ground. They're terrestrial. They're on the ground, Megan. Um, somebody forgot to tell them that. Tell who? The, the Gila monster. Why? Because you got he's him on, not on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Where is he? He's on the log. Uh uh. Yep. Well, looky, sure enough. Holy cow. Thanks for telling me. You're welcome. A little support next time. Oh, right behind him is the beaded lizard. Did oh, you see him? Oh, I did not. Hold on. Bear with dun, us. Dun, We're going to move the camera. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you got them both? Yeah. They're both in the shot right now. Oh, that's so a cool picture. The beaded lizard's on the right. Uh-uh. Um, nope. The Gila monster's on the right. <laughs> yeah. The beaded lizard's on the left. Yeah. Both venomous. Oh, that's why there's a glass wall. See, yes, okay. for sure. So yeah, both are venomous. Neither have fangs. What do they have instead? Teeth. True. Cool. They, when they bite onto their prey, the venom kind of flows along grooves in the teeth. Oh. And that's what gets into the prey to paralyze it so they can eat it. So they have to kind of hold on and chew to get the venom going into their prey item. How's that for a 10 o'clock in the morning discussion? Yay. <laughs> and they are carnivores. Digital friends, carnivores. Look at those toenails. Nails, yeah. Yeah, oh my goodness. Meat eaters, carnivore. And you can see those claws. Yeah, they're good on the ground. Climb a little bit, obviously. They got up there. Not a problem with that. They're enjoying the sunshine today. Oh, they are ectothermic. They get their body temperature from the air that surrounds them. Sometimes we hear the word cold-blooded, but ectotherm is what we want to use here. So their temperature isn't regulated internally. It's regulated by the air or the water surrounding them. Can you get a picture of a tail? Uh-huh. We're talking about a lizard tail, right? Lizard's tail, yes. Oh, okay. Lizard yes. tail. Got it. <laughs> Those big old honking thick tails on the lizard are actually very good. They'll store fat, not water, they'll store fat in there at times of need. So that's where they can re they can pull energy from. They can pull those from those fat reserves in times that resources are not as common. So they're able to use that. The skull is bumpy too. Did you know that? The, the skin, skull? The, the skin bone? is bumpy. But you look, when you touch them, they feel kind of like a basketball. They have that look of, like I said, kind of a, the, like the a Gila bumpy monster. Leather? Yeah, like a bumpy leather. So the Gila monster has that almost a basketball look to it. Kind of that peachy, orangey, 
color with some black stripes on it. Um, kind of a triangle shaped head, eh, kind of. And then, but the entire, the entire body has covered with those bumps. A couple reasons I think they're covered with bumps. One, added protection, just more bumps. But two, it might be able to kind of to, to gather some water during the morning. They've been known to lick dew from their skin. Well, that's cool. Isn't that neat? And the beaded lizard behind, more of a dark green and maybe a light green splotchy, maybe a light, a weird yellow splotchy to it. I think he's giving us the stink eye. He's giving us a lizard eye? Yeah. I think it's time to move on? Maybe. So this is the first habitat <laughs> here at the North Carolina Zoo's desert space. Let's see if we can find out who's making all the noise over here. Over here on the left hand side as we come through. This is one of our bird space, one of our bird habitats. Wow. Who are you on there, Megan? Um, I'm on glass. You're on glass? Yes. On the bottom down there. Look what? at the bottom right. Okay, I see him. White headed buffalo weaver. That's who was making the noise a second ago. Ah. Doing the chirping and the chittering. There's a couple rocks. in there. Oh, he did? Yeah. How about this over here on the left, for, then? What do you think? He's looking for some nesting, so what is this? What is that? Oh, it's the cutest, most. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Look at those eyes. What is that, Steve? That is a bird. Cool. Oh, looking right. He's like, he's like, dude, tell him who I really. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I don't, I don't, I only know of one kind of bird that can turn their head that far around. Oh, you do, huh? So maybe that's a little bit of a giveaway of what type of bird this might be? It's got to be some kind of an owl. There you go. This is a burrowing owl, a burrowing owl. They spend a lot of their time on the ground. Good runners. And they literally live in burrows. Shocking. And he doesn't, or it does not look like he's sleeping in the daylight right Great now. Great point. This is a diurnal, daytime active owl. Most owls, as you guys know very well, are nocturnal. The burrowing owl is more of a diurnal owl. I'm looking for the second one. This is one of the challenges when you come to the Ooh. zoo. You see her turn her head all My the way around. Friend. Oh, did she? I didn't see. I was she like, whoa, quick. watch this. She said, I can do I can go to the bathroom too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when you come to the zoo, everybody, we say this a lot, please slow down. Look Take high and low and in between and Absolutely. under the rocks. 100%. Because you will find the animals if you take your time. Now, I will say some of them are harder to find than others. Especially in our really awesome, huge habitats. Right, which are designed for who? You or the critter? Uh, the critter. Yeah. And I don't know how good you are on the camera. I mean, I'm pretty good. You are pretty good. I'll give you that. Okay. Where are we going? You're not a bad teammate. I just saw... A roadrunner. What? True. Oh, uh, was it really fast? Me, me. <laughs> no. Did it drop a brick on you? <laughs> I'm sure was thinking about it. <laughs> but let me see. Oh, he's up on the, on the black, on the back. You're going to have to really oh. use those skills, Megan. Oh, my God. So goodness. the roadrunner, all these animals, kind of a, a dusty brown, dark brown, light splotchy patterns. Okay, he's on right them. behind the tree. Why oh. have those digital friends? You guys see him? He's right he's Hard right to there. see. Right there. But when you're a desert critter, kind of makes sense for camouflage. Have that sandy brown, dusty brown, darkish brown kind of background and splotchy white or splotchy light or tan look as well. Whoa. Can you, can you see the bill? That's his, his tail is that long? Oh, of course. Oh my goodness. Think about cougars. Think about cheetahs. When they run quickly, when they run fast, the tail helps them balance. And the roadrunner, although maybe not cartoon fast, <laughs> spends a lot of his time on the ground, pursuing prey, chasing prey on the ground. We did, so they have, are a, fast. We did oh, have a picture there. of his bill. Oh, there he goes. Oh, look at that shot. So look at the beak, look at the bill. Same thing. 
flash and the tail put forth. That's a little bit of a, of a display, but the bill, that tells us that he's a meat eater too. Ooh. He might eat bugs, he might eat lizards, might take his, he came all the way to the other side over Did here. he? Oh, see, he's that fast. Oh my goodness, that was funny. But that's our road runner. And that little high-pitched trill you heard us mention again, that one, that's buffalo, the white-headed buffalo weaver bird. Much more of a different color pattern, much lighter oh, on the chest. I got the white-headed buffalo weaver in the camera. Oh, good. There you can see the color difference. White chest and head, black wings, and a kind of a, a goldish rump, goldish yellow rump. Oh, I see the gold. As you can see, when they're, especially when they're flipping around, flitting around, flying. So this habitat is here for the birds, some of the birds in the desert space. The roadrunner white-headed buffalo weaver, and the burrowing owl. There's another one up here, Megan. Oh, ooh, cool. The very top. Yep. So here's one of our open top habitats at the North Carolina Zoo in the desert habitat, featuring animals, uh, yeah, that are found in deserts. Megan has a spiffy shot of both a Euromastix on your right side, looking away from you sort of, and looking at you is a really cool plated lizard. Plated lizard. They actually almost have bones or plates under their skin to protect them. It's one of the things they're able to, to rely on. But I want you, hey Megan, do me a favor, get a, get a picture of the tail in the Euromastix. This one? Yeah. Whoa. Oh wow, what a shot. So they use, that's really important to them. And you'll hear this again in a minute, I believe, but the tail is really important to many lizards. That's where they keep the fat reserves when resources are low. So a really big, fat, healthy tail, nice, healthy animal, has plenty of reserves in there to survive. And as you all well know, resources in the desert can be hard to come by, especially water. So if you can reserve some of that in your tail section, Voila! Wonderful success to survival. And you can see it really well in that picture that Megan's showing you of the Euromastix tail. Let's show them. Can you show them the pancakes? Yeah. Pancakes. It's pancakes. That's what kind do you like? Hungry. What kind do you like? Um, chocolate chip pancakes chocolate or chip? blueberry pancakes? I'm all about a blueberry. Uh, what about yeah. a pancake tortoise? I've never had one before. I've held one before. Really? Yeah. One of our, one Was of our it animal squishy? masters. It was a little squishy. I think we digress. Okay. Let's talk about pancake tortoises. Okay. <laughs> I think this is really cool because one of the neat things you can see here is one of the ways the zoo takes care to make sure their animals get all the stuff they need, the heat, the UV, the light. So what looks like a log might be a log, but inside of its lights or heat lamps providing the animals the resources they need to survive. I see that. The tortoises actually look kind of orange from the light there. Yeah, nice catch. Yeah. So that's exactly what's going on there. So if Megan pulls out a little bit, you'll see that entire log. So it's, wow. it's kind of built into the habitat. So and we they, kind of hide it. They hang out in all of these hidey holes. Exactly. So that's why we tell you when you come to the North Carolina Zoo, pause and look around for the food. Look around for the animals, look around for the water, the enrichment. You've heard all this before, my digital friends. So you've got to pause and look around when you come into the habitats. So this is the first open top habitat at the North Carolina Zoo's desert space. We're gonna head on down here and look at a couple other things real fast. It's gonna be fine. There should be another Euromastix in here. You find them already? This one has bright colors. Oh, wow, look at that. And you can see again the light, right? So. Wow. Megan's going to show you the critter first. Maybe. I think this there is kind of neat. There's the Euromastix checking everything out. Whoa. So he's hanging out there. It's like, well, what is that? And if Megan will pull out. This one's tail is bigger than the oh, other Oh, it is. One. A little healthier, yeah. a little fatter. Maybe there's a little more fat reserves in there. <laughs> and as Megan pulls out, there's that broken piece of pottery. And Megan, do me a favor. Yeah. Can you shoot towards the top of it? The top of that pot? Right there. Yeah, and maybe our guests can see. Um, Shh, don't tell anybody. Can you see the electric cord in there? That's what that is. That's an electric cord. Oh, cool. <laughs> so 
providing electricity to that heat lamp or UV light or whatever it might be in this habitat in the desert space of the North Carolina Zoo. Look at this. So here's another one of our open top habitats at the North Carolina Zoo. What? And right, you can. <laughs> can you show them the pot? The cooking the pot. pot? Yes. Show them the cooking pot. <laughs> um, what do you see on top of the cooking pot? I, I, I don't think that's a part of the pot. No. Nope. Is that a, uh, a chuck wallet? It is. Nice. Yes. Yeah. That's a chuck wallet. Another example of a dart camouflaged very well in this habitat. Especially animal. on top of the pot. Especially on top of the pot. So for whatever reason, he's decided to be on top of the pot. Maybe there's a heat source inside of the pot um, to keep the animal warm. I've seen them. I've seen the animals in the North Carolina stacked on top of each other on the pot or under the pot. It's like, so, hey, you know, it's all about their choice and control. <laughs> right, digital friends? You've heard that before when we've talked about that. Where does the animal want to be? Here's a place for you to go. Your choice completely to do what you want to do, where you want to do it. It, it looks pretty satisfied there. So He does look pretty content, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. I'm looking around. I'm looking for a collared lizard. Again, it is not easy all the time to see some of these critters. Especially this habitat um, has the rock areas mm -hmm. that also have light kind of up underneath the edges. Yeah, so little hidey holes. Let's see. See if we can see anybody on the rocks. You got anybody? <gasps> Ooh. What'd you got? Right there. The, uh -uh. Where, the, where the log changes to another log. Look at, look, look. There's a log that changes to another log? With a lizard in the middle. With a lizard in the middle. Uh-uh. No way. Are you serious? What are you talking about? Serious. Megan? Megan. Yeah. So you're our guest now. You see, you've got look, our guest thinking. Look, his little, his they, little they, tail they can is right there. see an see animal in there. Here you're saying this and you think that they're, they're just, they're, look, it's two logs. Steve. Megan, it's two logs. It's two logs and a lizard. There's a dark log. And then a lizard. And then there's a light log. And then a light log. Are you sure there's a lizard? Let me see. I don't know what else it would be. What are you, what are you looking at? Oh my goodness. See? Uh, Might need to put your glasses on. I left them over there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's another chuckwalla. And that's actually one of the things they'll do to protect themselves. They'll kind of wedge themselves into, in between rocks. They'll wedge themselves like here, maybe under a log. And they'll puff themselves up with air. So a predator can't pull them out from a space. That's a great spot. Right? You saw them petrified wood? Don't worry. We didn't scare it to petrification. The wood? Yeah. It, like petrified. Petrified. Scared. scared. Ah, I'm petrified. Get it? I get it. <laughs> I do. I get it. I'll, I'll laugh later. <laughs> okay, thanks. Whoa, what's that, Steve? It's way up in the sky. Well, you can't come to a desert habitat and not look at the Swaro cactus, but we're not going to look at this Swaro cactus. Aww. Come down a little bit further. Come down okay. a little bit further. Come down a little bit further. Okay. okay. See that really spiky one? Real yeah. long and skinny? Yeah, it looks it looks painful. It would be if you ran into it. That's called an ocotillo. Ocotillo. It's not a cactus. It's a bush. Oh. And a lot of people will use it as a living fence. You can see little tiny green leaves on it right now. That helps us define it as not a cactus. You can actually see the leaves on that bush of the ocotillo. Wow. And then if you look right past the suaro, can you see the dead ocotillo up there, everybody? Oh. You can see where it gets, it's a fence and pretty impenetrable if you don't want to mess with it. Yep, I'm not going through it. No, not a good idea. But here is the iconic suaro cactus. Oh, cool. so this is what a lot of people think about when they think of cactus. Although they think about a cactus like this with arms on it. Yeah. They live hundreds of years. Those arms don't come until they're 30, 40, 50 years old. What? Right? So that's what's going on. This is, I wouldn't this even cactus. have arms yet. Wow. You'd have all of the arms. Are you, are you calling? I think. All right. Let's, 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 let's keep going, Megan. So <laughs> look at this. See the little divots? Yeah. 
So that's what, if the if the plant was full of water, if there was a huge storm and it sucked up as much water as it could, all these would kind of push out and it would be more round. Oh. So this helps it kind of survive. And each one of these spines, yeah, I'm not touching them. No. Each one of those, it's a leaf. It's a modified leaf. Ow. Right. Yes, exactly. And they protect the plant for sure from yeah. humans, from other, from animals. It also provides a little tiny bit of shade. Yeah, I can put see the shadow on the, on, the, on the cactus. See? Yeah. And put a lot of them together, provides a little more shade to keep the plant cool. Wow. So this is your saguaro cactus, a very iconic cactus, especially of the Southwest United States. Come over here, Megan. Let's show them a couple things over here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Knuckle down, buckle down. Do it, do it, do it. Show them. How about this? This is kind of cool. Um, Steve? Yep. Why is there a brain in brain. the desert? Oh, Megan, brain cactus. That's a member of the brain cactus family. See the spines? Yeah. Not a brain, mm. but a type of brain cactus. Again, covered in spines, okay. covered in those, in, those, in those modified leaves. All right. And then I right behind it? it? Yeah. Ooh. Right? Prickly pear. There's a lot of different species of prickly pear cactus. This is one. Uh, the paddles can be eaten on this. And so can the fruit. The fruit's a beautiful, deep red color. Megan, do you know what the name of um, prickly pear cactus is? No. Animals and plants have some strange names sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, name of the prickly pear cactus yeah. fruit? Yeah. A tuna. Huh? Right? Come here. What? I'm over here now. I just, uh, I dropped that. Yeah, my, my mind is kind of blown. Well, it's a, t a tuna flower? Not a flower, oh, fruit. Fruit, a tuna fruit? Tuna fruit. <laughs> How about that? Tuna fruit. <laughs> tuna fruit. So yeah, it's a, the fruit of the prickly pear cactus <laughs> is called a tuna. Cool. I think we got it right that time. Yeah. So a couple other things looking out of that little More running. More brains. That little, Okay, sorry. More brain. Cacti. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> little running cactus there. Yeah. And then over here we have the agave in the middle. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Look at the spines on that. Pollinated by? <gasps> is it the, is it the, um, bat? Yes, it's pollinated by a bat. Wow. How cool is that? And then surrounding it kind of are two yuccas. Oh, yuck. Just uh -huh. kidding. You guys aren't really yuck. <laughs> You're cool. Little yuccas. Yeah. And then do me a favor, Megan. I want you to yeah. show our digital friends this big, long piece of wood. That's huh? not part of the fence? No, like, not part no? of the fence. It's okay. not part of the barrier. Uh, well, what is Can it? Can you show them that? Yeah. I don't, I, don't know. I don't know. I'm waiting for somebody else to answer. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. That's not true. I do know this time. I mean. It looks what do you think like, it looks like? It looks like they're kind of together at the top there, like it's right there. It's a little bound together at the top. Yeah. Nice. Good shot. Good shot. Yeah. Just friends, what is that? What is Megan showing you right now? Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Ribs. They're not my ribs. Ribs. Those are ribs. What? True. Those are the ribs of the Suaro cactus. Oh, that's why they're like together. Right. That's what gives the cactus its structure. That's what okay. gives it its look and its appearance. So the arms would come out of that. So it's not a tree. It's not a woody tree or a woody bush. It's a cactus, but it gives those ribs, provide the support within the saguaro. How about that for some plants of the desert habitat here at the North Carolina Zoo? Quite impressive. Hi. Hi. Bloop, bloop. What is a pile of toads called? We need a word squishy? for this. Squishy. It's a squishiness. <laughs> it's a squishiness of toads. It's a giant squishy. We are making this up, digital friends. This is not a real thing. These are real, however. This is the Colorado River toad. Colorado River toad. And there's three there, and they are massive. They're bigger than your closed fist. That's a, pretty big, especially right? if you use your fist. You have big hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, beautiful dark green color, almost throughout. Little little tiny splotches of a lighter green maybe here and there. And they've got a nasty, nasty toxin. Ew. So if they've got a toxin, 
and you that you get sick if you lick them. If if they if you were to do something, if you were to touch them, you were to ingest the toxin. If you get sick when you touch them, does that make them venomous or poisonous? You get sick when you touch them as opposed to you getting sick when they bite you. Hmm. Venom or poison? Dun, 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 dun. Poison! Right. Good job, Megan. Thanks. They are poisonous. They have a poison. They have a toxin. And it is potent. It can actually take down a large dog. What? It can make people sick. Um, so for so those yeah. of you who um, whose dogs go around eating toads, not always constantly the best. be aware, right? Yes. Constantly be aware of that behavior because they can, it can, get sick. can make you sick. Absolutely, can make them sick. Can make you sick too. So they do. They've got a nasty toxin. It's called a fancy science phrase: bufo toxin. Huh? Bufo meaning toad or frog. Bufo. Oh, toxin. that's funny. Right? Yep. Yeah. So they've got that kind of toxin. It's usually right behind the eyes. There's usually a gland right behind the eyes. That's what makes their eyes look even bigger. Yep. Wow. And if you can see that one right in front of you, Mm -hmm. you can see their tympanic membrane, if you've got a good eye. Look right behind the eye, literally right behind it, underneath what looks like that crest. There's a little circle. Can you see that little circle? Uh Uh-huh. That's where they hear from. That's their tympanic membrane. That's where they listen. That's where they can hear sounds from. And right behind the eye on top of the head, uh-huh. and maybe kind of above that little bony knob, that's where the, that's where that, um, the bufo toxin would be kept. Bufo. Yep. Colorado nice. River. Oh, what a great shot, Megan. Nice job. Thanks. Absolutely. All right, what's next? We have one more. So come over here. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Another glass wall. Another habitat. Yeah. Again, you've got to be patient. You've got to look. You've got to wait and be patient to find. I see evidence of an animal. That's called poop. Oh, okay, cool. But that does mean that someone's here. That is right. And look in the back right-hand corner. <gasps> Kelly! <laughs> Some of the animals here just have people loving them. All the time. And this is Kelly. Look at the toes. Kelly is a Cape porcupine. Oh my goodness. You've met Rhyme before, Digital Friends. Rhyme was the North American porcupine. As we mentioned just a moment ago, it was kind of almost serendipitous that Cat stopped by. Cat did work with, Cat is the keeper. She's now in education. She did work with Kelly a lot. She actually trained Kelly to go on walks, to go into crates, to get weighed. Um, so Kat did a lot of work, and we have done, we did an episode inside Aviary with Kat and Kelly. Oh my gosh, maybe a hundred episodes ago now, <laughs> a long time ago. But if you want to get, see some of the past episodes, you can get onto YouTube, and you can track down some of those past episodes. They're also on Facebook. It's just a little bit easier to track them down on YouTube. Quick reminders, porcupines do not have the ability to shoot their quills. Those quills are embedded in the skin. They're lightly attached, however. They will rattle them to make a noise from time to time, to make a little rattly noise. They will use them, they'll kind of back into a tree or they'll face into a tree and have those quills pointing outwards to help them help protect themselves. But just a modified hair. That's all the quills are. And on Kelly, you can see she has some hair. You can see that for sure. And you can see some of the quills kind of standing up. Now, they can erect them. They can make them stand up a little bit more to become even more of a a defense mechanism. Without hair gel? Without hair gel, yes. Nice. Right? Mad My cousin does his hair like that, but he has to use a lot of hair gel. (laughs) To keep it in place. Mm -hmm. So Kelly the porcupine. A rodent, a gnar, an herbivore, teeth constantly growing. They've got to chew on hard things to keep those teeth cut back. Pretty cute. Look how 
big she is. She's massive. They're one of the largest rodents in the world. She's way bigger than Rhyme. Yep, yep. Remember that Rhyme is more of an arboreal animal? So Rhyme oh. can climb, where these guys are a little more terrestrial. You know, spending the, most of their time on the ground, on land. That makes sense that she's bigger than. Right, yeah. Yep. So, should we continue? I don't know. What? I'm, no? I'm kinda, I kind of want to stay, stay with... Oh, look, Kelly's even picking her head up. So you don't think we should look, continue? Look, she's standing up. We didn't, but we've got more to see. But we Steve, got, what? But look. Okay. Look at her cute. She laid back down. So what? So you think we should just go ahead and wrap here then? But we have more to. There's more place to see. But, see? but look, Kelly, look, look you're here. never gonna get as good but, of an ending spot here. Okay. Okay. But look. Okay. I mean, there's there's more to see. Okay, but to be continued. More desert. Oh, y'all, let's. Uh, Remember, we have that new animal coming in? Yeah. Let's do it then. Okay. What do you think? All right, sound good? Right, so, so we get to stay with Kelly now? Yes, you can stay with Kelly now. I'll wrap everything up. You stay with Kelly. You okay, show thanks. them, Kelly. I'm going to wrap up everything. Digital friends, we truly appreciate you being with us today once again for Zoo Adventures. Um, this taped episode at, at the Desert Space from the North Carolina Zoo. Your Zoo Adventures team today, Steve was in front of the camera. Sometimes, and Megan was behind the camera. We had a lot of fun guests today, too. We did. They didn't know it was coming. They did. It was funny. You think they'll still like this after this? Mm, they have to. All right, good deal. All right, little friends. Great to see you once again. Stay safe. We can't wait to see you at the North Carolina Zoo down the road. Bye, y'all.